Vivian. So, clerk seekers, can you please call roll? Warninski. I'm here in Canton Township. Yep. Um, you, just the name would be. Okay. Warninski uh, is here. <laughs> Good evening. I'm here. Inguli. Good evening. I'm here. Graham Hudek. Here. Seagrist is in attendance. Slavens. Good evening. I am here. Thank you. Can I please hear a motion to adopt the agenda? So moved. Support. Moved by Clerk Segris, supported by Treasurer Slavens. Can I have um, everyone say aye if they adopt the agenda? Aye. 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 Any nays? Okay. Thank you. Agenda adopted. So the item that we have on today's agenda is a study session, which is a 2022 five-year park and recreation master plan, review of draft plan and park maps. So Director Honberger, would you please lead us off? Certainly, I'm happy to be here. Thank you so much for the opportunity to be here this evening to present a draft of the five-year leisure services master plan. It's a, certainly an exciting opportunity for us to be here and we've really worked well with uh, McKenna to help guide us in this process. They've been a fantastic partner to work with. We've had a few staff, member here, staff members here this evening who have really helped contribute and drive uh, the process here for this. Uh, we have John Lefevre, our deputy director, Jeanette Aiello, our business supervisor, and Laura Mortier, our recreation supervisor, who's really also stepped in to help with this process and learn along the way. So. With that, I will kick this process over to Laura with McKenna and let her introduce her team, and then she'll walk you through the process. Thank you very much, Greg. Uh, good evening, trustees. Uh, Laura Ha with McKenna, and with me this evening is Julie from um, Russell Design, uh, the landscape architect company um, who has prepared um, in detail the two concept plans for Ridge Road and Patriot, or I'm sorry, Heritage. Um, I'm just going to share my screen to pull up the presentation. Okay. So everyone should be able to see that at home as well. Sorry about that. Um, so first, I just wanted to kind of start off by explaining that our approach to Canton's five-year recreation master plan um, really was taken through the lens of uh, the goals that this uh, board has uh, adopted um, and the vision that you see moving forward. So that would be of equity, sustainability, um, and inclusion. Uh, and the five goals that we have listed and are woven throughout the plan are welcoming community, um, creating a healthy ecosystem, prioritizing quality infrastructure, developing culture, and ensuring financial stability in park and rec decisions. So with that approach, um, we have drafted the um, park and recreation plan to meet uh, the following seven um, key requirements um, from the state, from the uh, Michigan Department of Natural Resources. Um, these items must be met in the draft plan in order for the state to approve it. And um, there are some additional components um, within the plan as well, uh, for instance, the connectivity analysis. But these seven are the, the main um, key components. Um, that would be the community description, the administrative structure, the inventory of your facilities, uh, inventory of any natural resources, the description of the planning and public input process, and then goals and objectives, and lastly, your action plan. Um, what is the guidebook for the next five years? So in meeting these requirements, uh, the township will be eligible for MDNR uh, state grants, um, and will also maintain the CAPRA accreditation. Um, this is a national accreditation, and um, Canton is only one of four municipalities in Michigan um, that has had this accreditation awarded. And uh, Canton is also the longest uh, standing community in Michigan to hold this accreditation uh, since 2004. 
So one of the first um, things that we look at is the community profile, the community description. And Canton continues uh, to be one of the largest growing communities um, in Michigan. Um, you can see in the um, column to the far right in the first table that uh, SEMCOG also uh, projects that the township will continue to grow uh, well into 2045. Uh, the second table um, details the primary household types that are experiencing growth. Um, you can see that these are seniors, 65 and older, and also households that have um, uh, two individuals but without children, um, anyone under the age of 18. And I think this household composition and the changes um, that we're seeing uh, goes to show the diversity in the community um, and how uh, that diversity must be reflected in recreation planning. Um, so for instance, if the facilities um, and programs were oriented just towards um, families with children, um, then those programs would fail to meet 63% of the households in Canton of that audience. Uh, another indicator that we look at um, are individuals with disabilities. Um, Canton um, has 9.9% .9 of, of residents um, with a dis disability. And the township's goal of universal access uh, really will help deliver a community where all segments of the population can enjoy the services of uh, Can Leisure Services. One very important component to park and rec planning is understanding uh, what the community already has and um, to identify what deficiencies in facilities there might be. Um, the diversity of Canton's population, um, as we just discussed, really drives the need for such a wide range of facilities, especially as the population will continue to grow. Um, in comparison to the National Recreation and Park Association's metric data database, Canton actually provides almost every type of facility um, that they list. Um, you can see uh, the opportunities to expand the offerings here. Um, so for instance, for a community of Canton's population, um, typically the national average would be to have 11 basketball courts. And you can see here that four um, out of those 11 are provided. So these were some um, um, amenities that we noted as being deficient when compared to the national standards. Um, so that would be the basketball courts, dog parks, uh, outdoor swimming pool, uh, cricket fields, outdoor ice rinks, and a nature center. And I think it's Im important to note though that even though you, the community may be deficient um, with four out of 11 basketball courts, that doesn't necessarily mean that uh, tomorrow we need to go out and build um, more basketball courts, but rather to take this analysis into consideration of the community desires and the community composition, since every community is unique, um, and to, to look at the whole picture. So this is one component of that. I do think it's interesting that um, these deficiencies that we heard, the basketball courts, the outdoor swimming pool, the cricket field, winter activities, uh, the nature center, um, these items were all supported in the public engagement that we heard uh, throughout the process. Um, so there is some um, correlation between those. Uh, another component of the plan is connectivity. And we understand that the predominant transportation method in the township um, is by personal vehicle. Um, and that is largely because the land use patterns in the community um, are oriented towards drivers. Um, you can see here transportation to work, 86% uh, um, drive their personal vehicle alone. Um, this is data from pre-COVID um, from the 2019 uh, ACS. Um, but Canton is, is similar in the statistic to other communities um, in Metro Detroit. However, improving mobility um, is not only important for the recreation component of this plan, but it's also one of the um, uh, public policies that can meaning, meaning, 
meaningfully uh, address climate change. Um, so with this build out, uh, built out community and the existing land use patterns that you have today, um, we really see two retrofitting strategies. Um, the first would be to um, prioritize the construction of sidewalks and trails uh, and to bridge those gaps. And of course, um, Municipal Services is also working on, um, on this effort. Um, the other part of that is to look at the existing sidewalks and uh, trails and make sure that they are safe, they are accessible, and that they can be used. Because just because it's there doesn't necessarily mean that um, it's in good condition or um, was designed to current um, accessibility standards. Uh, the second retrofit strategy that we look at in the plan is to, um, rather than create a destination that individuals have to get to that's further away, um, but to create some of those infill green spaces and pocket parks within the neighborhoods um, so that it's easier to um, make those amenities available to residents. Um, and this map um, on the screen here shows uh, the southeast quadrant of the township. Um, for the purposes of this plan, we did divide the township into four main quadrants and um, took the analysis down to, to that level um, in order to determine those sidewalk gaps and um, the comfortable uh, quarter mile walking radius uh, to recreation spaces. Community input um, that we gathered over the past couple months also largely influenced uh, this draft plan. So between um, the various outreach events um, through June, uh, July, and August, we were able to connect with over 750 individuals, and we had, uh, just for Heritage Park uh, alone, over 100 unique individual ideas. Um, and for the Ridge Road Park, um, even more in unique comments. Uh, so for instance, uh, this is just a tally of um, the two pop-up events we had in June, uh, asking what's your big idea. Uh, this was the, the voting exercise. Um, and uh, there was a total of 492 votes um, that were cast for that exercise. So this, this is just for that one board, it, it isn't including um, any other comments that we received through the events. And then um, similar for the August uh, pop-up events, um, we presented the two concept plans, one for Heritage and one for Ridge Road, um, and asked participants to share if they loved, liked, or disliked, hated the plan. Um, and um, we received um, over 550 um, votes total. And with that, you know, comes along the fact that when somebody is voting, they're sharing with us why they're, why they're voting for loving the park or why they're voting for um, only liking it. So we took all of those comments into consideration. And then um, I just wanted to mention the June and August focus groups. Um, these were very helpful as this the same individuals were invited um, back to the second round of focus groups. Um, and that allowed us to have a more in-depth discussion and to show the progress of the park plans um, and um, what amenities um, were needed and what adjustments um, should be made. Um, next, I wanted to get into a bit of a detailed discussion about Heritage Park. Uh, the public engagement um, led us to create this colorful bubble diagram. Um, this is a design of the park into to different components, different use components, um, and it's really just a way uh, for us to kind of initially illustrate what we heard from the community. So as part of that um, process, we heard uh, the need for a new cricket facility, um, one that would be regulation size. Um, a community pool was one um, desire that came up um, many times. Uh, more accessible parking um, for going to events, um, uh, taking uh, kids um, and seniors. Um, creating more natural areas throughout the park and in increasing the tree cover. 
uh, basketball courts, fitness equipment throughout the park and walking trails um, as well, and then volleyball courts. So understanding uh, that community information and the existing constraints of the park, um, that led us to fine tune this design further into this conceptual park master plan. And I'm going to turn it over to Julie to um, discuss some of the key features. Good evening. Good evening and thank you, Laura. So I'd like to take you on a brief stroll through the beloved Heritage Park. Um, the, this is a treasured park for the community. Um, and throughout the design process, the overall layout and programming has remained fairly consistent uh, with providing the opportunities uh, for community pool, which has been a, a response to ongoing public interest, um, multi-use pavilions throughout for picnicking, a lot of flexible opportunities uh, that could generate revenue options um, for the community and provide a lot of comfort for visitors. So let's see, where to, should I try and point with this? Let's start with the, with A, yeah. The multi-use pavilion. So this is a currently underutilized space without development in the park. And it is offering a beautiful opportunity for a multi-use pavilion with um, a hydration station, perfect for yoga classes, and it could be utilized by the summer camps from the summit or from uh, opportunities from the library. Um, and we're really trying to push accessibility and connectivity throughout the park. So this space leads up to the volleyball courts, which are realigned there and heading east-west we have a very strong connecting pedestrian corridor with an anchoring feature which could, rep which could include a water element and really be uh, complementary to the existing pond with enhancements. And leading north from there, we have a pedestrian hall lined with trees um, added shade throughout the park was one of the largest public input comments we received. There was a lack of shade, and so we're proposing trees throughout. Um, this space with the corridor would also give the opportunity for um, tents during the festival, uh, benches, and it connects the entire northeast portion of that park to give it a nice, strong, defining character. We have reduced that parking lot slightly to accommodate and align this to expand north toward the playgrounds so that it connects the uses for all of the different age groups. Um, just to the east of this walk, uh, we have transitioned this what is currently a soccer field into a butterfly garden with meandering pathways, a picnic grove, and we're incorporating that into the ponds with increased aeration and uh, erosion control measures to really enhance the aesthetic and function of that uh, focal piece of the park. Um, we're preserving the and honoring the Veterans Memorial as well as the clock tower which has the label E um, which is a fairly unusable space in a extremely prime location. 
And so there we are proposing a food court plaza with outdoor seating, a lot of benches, uh, hydration stations, shade opportunities. Uh, you could fit multiple food trucks in that, especially for when there are events like Liberty Fest or, the, or at the amphitheater, and it would consolidate that activity uh, so that it was more easily identifiable for wayfinding. Uh, we have added several parking clusters throughout the park um, to increase accessibility um, and proposed a ticket booth with fencing that would have the gates open uh, during non-amphitheater events, but you would have the opportunity to actually have ticketed events and revenue uh, renovate, <laughs> generate revenue uh, at that amphitheater and hold larger events. Um, we're proposing a new boardwalk that follows the same character currently, but with a screened pavilion, possibly a wonderful opportunity to have uh, power sources and be a homework spot connected to the library. Um, teen activities was one of the responses that we've received from the public and just a nice place to do homework, believe it or not, was, was considered a wonderful opportunity. And so a nice screened area from the bugs and the weather would provide that. Just south of there with the letter C is an outdoor fitness trail with accessible pathways and accessible exercise equipment um, leading towards the new cricket field, which is uh, to official size. And we've realigned the driving range to afford us that opportunity to prov provide a full-size cricket field there. And just below there, we've got a community pool. And this, is, uh, this has been an ongoing public interest that we've heard is the desire for a 50 meter outdoor pool and a zero depth entry pool with um, pool activities and toys. Uh, surrounding the pool, there are picnic areas, small 10 by 10 pavilions, and a bathhouse, as well as restroom. An additional parking over there so it does not flood the parking lot for the summit. Just to the west is a potential community event space. And then overall, general parking enhancements, um, hydration stations, and uh, finishing the baseball field quad and trying to preserve the character and not overload the park with different programming, but complement it and create fluidity between the different uses. Thank you, Julie. Uh, the next park concept that we wanted to touch base in detail is... Can we ask questions about that park before you go on? Oh, certainly. Okay. Please. Anyone have any questions or comments? I had some questions, but I don't... Go ahead. I guess my first question is, so by putting the, the east-west colonnade of trees by the um, separating those soccer fields, um, Leisure Services feels comfortable that this wouldn't um, substantially hinder our ability to to stage for Liberty Fest in that in that space. No, no, we were very comfortable with this plan, and that was one of the considerations that we had um, uh, throughout this was um, making modifications that would still allow us to have a good event space for Liberty Fest. We may have to modify some things and move things around a little bit, but we do that every year anyways. So that's just. Yeah. That way. And I saw in space A where we started the uh, multi-use pavilion there. 
is that, was it intentional? I mean, so one thing that's interesting about this plan is we're connecting the summit parking in a way with the cricket field. And, but what we don't do is have a path that crosses the river there. Is, was that intentional that we didn't want to connect that? Um, like I was just thinking if you're gonna do yoga, odds are those individuals would be used to doing yoga inside during the winter at the summit. And if you move it outside now, um, there's just no good way to get to that pavilion to make it extremely usable. Whereas if you put another bridge there, they would essentially be parking in the exact same location when they were using the summit. Is that, was that intentional not to connect that? No, no, that's, that's a good concept. That's something that we could add into the plan in here. Typically, um, if people are gonna go to a outdoor fitness class like that, we may have them check in at the summit front desk and then they could exit out the rear of the building and cross at that bridge. But uh, an accessible way to get across there from that parking space, no matter what we're using that for, whether it's a, uh, a yoga class or Boy Scouts nature class, whatever the case may be, it would be, that would be helpful. So that's a good. Yeah. One of the options with that as well is it creates a more private secluded space. So if you were doing a meditation program or you wanted something where you wanted to create a defined space, if it was with children, you don't always want them running off into other areas. So one of the opportunities with that, and of course, when we get to the point of potentially implementing these designs, is that really deciding what exact programs will take place there um, because there may be opportunities where having a secluded space may be more beneficial than having a pathway. But we could always do pathways further down or further, or further to the west, either one that could better connect to those spaces and still create um, a defined area for those classes. I wasn't advocating for the path. I was just curious about that, but that, that's a good point too. My other question was um, down by where the moved driving range is. We, you kind of talked about the community event space. Is that a structure like a, a, is like a building or a pavilion or what, what, what is that? Yes. So it's, uh, we haven't defined exactly what that would be and a lot of the specifics of what these, the next step in this is if we wanted to develop any of these spaces or move forward would be to get into a more detailed architectural design. So conceptually, we've talked about anything from a pavilion that could double as winter cart storage because we don't have a, a indoor area for our golf carts to store over the winter to a, it could be anywhere from that to a um, fully climate controlled building, depending on what we wanted to do um, as, a, as an option for that space. Yeah, interesting. I met uh, John Lefevre on the drive in today to work and I was telling him about my trip to Boyne City where there was a pavilion right there on the water that had um, doors, clear doors that would roll down. And so in the summer, it's a typical pavilion and you don't know the doors are there. And then the other two or three seasons of the year, the doors can pull down and you can continue to program around the year. And I thought it was just one of the coolest buildings I had seen in a public park. Um, and as you all know, I, I tend to love parks. So uh, I was really impressed with that pavilion. But anyway, I was just curious. Other than that, I, again, this is a really exciting plan, uh, especially the butterfly garden stuff. Oh man, I, I wasn't expecting that. I got that section D, I got really excited over there. So good, good work. I like it. Kate, did you have something? Um, I was just, just going to say that um, this is really exciting work and I love how, um, first of all, how fabulous it is, but also how intentional and um, I, I'm really excited about it. Summer. Yes, I, I agree with Trustee Borninski. This is a really exciting plan, um, and I am very um, impressed with the intentionality um, behind it. I'm just wondering if it's possible to do some kind of path between the splash pad and the pool, just because I think that could be helpful for parents. Um, 
whose kids may want to do both or go back and forth? I absolutely agree. I think that would be phenomenal. Um, but within the parking lot between the summit and the pool, uh, there is an enhanced pedestrian pathway to provide visibility and safety for uh, patrons of the park to cross through that parking lot uh, in a very safe manner. But I think extending that pathway strongly to the splash pad is phenomenal. Okay. And I also love the idea um, of, the t of a teen area. And I'm wondering if it's possible to do like broadband in the park to increase connectivity for kids who are doing their homework out there. At that boardwalk um, pavilion would be a cool place. Yeah. You were talking about putting power stations there. Yeah. With, a, with a hot spot. Yeah. It would be helpful. Yes. I'd do my work out there. <laughs> my my 16 year old would, so <laughs> thank you. I, I do love this plan, thank you. If we do that, we'll have to take reservations for that space. But. <laughs> uh, be sending him out there to settle things down. Might, might get some Pokemon Go players. Tanya? Too, more than we already yeah, have. Yeah, I, uh, I have seen, uh, I think um, Trustee Borniski and I have been to the study sessions and the previous sessions that you, the community sessions and we really love this. Um, I also understand there's a like a child pool next to the, is there a plan for that? Like you have a child pool in there. Yeah, the zero mm -hmm. depth. Okay. Yeah, there's yeah. two pools because I know I, I asked that question because I wasn't, I wasn't clear like what the, what the, um, you know, there's the rectangular shaped pool and then there's something to the right and I wasn't sure what it is and that's another pool. Yeah, and uh, Director Hohenberger had also mentioned that if you're doing during Liberty Fest, we can have um, conduits on that walkway pavilion thing and where, you know, the carnival or any other places can have connections for their, um, you know, for their uh, equipment there. And I think that's a great idea. We are really thinking forward and as everyone said here, it was very intentional. I am. I'm very happy with this. So. Any other questions on this one? Yeah. Stephen. Thank you, I agree. Um, it's an exciting plan. Um, and so we have all the money, we start digging tomorrow, is that okay? <laughs> um, you tell me. Yeah, uh, <laughs> um, uh, Wendy's That's not here, so we can do whatever we want. Right? <laughs> um, She's on the she's on the Zoom. Oh, she might be raising her hand right now. <laughs> Hers is foiled again. Um, the questions that I have is, um, you mentioned the the food plaza. I see something also called a refreshment plaza down by the splash pad. Is that something new or yeah? That's a concept for the future to figure out what that's going to be. Okay. Uh, the request for the refreshment plaza was an area for an ice cream truck, oh, most okay. specifically. Okay, so it's more of a, instead of just having an ice cream truck, truck come by, it's more a nicer area for it to be stationed kind of thing. It's yeah. a flexible spot that offers um, the electric connection required yeah, for okay. one of those, but it was more on a smaller scale catered towards the children of the splash pad. Gotcha. Could be um, something we talked about that with where we might reserve that space so that we know that ice cream truck a is coming on monday and b is on tuesday and yeah, then maybe cool. a, a food truck on the weekend um if if um that opportunity was there so that we don't have a, a truck or two trucks parked in the parking lot kind of taking up space and circling around it's it's just a natural area that a nice amenity when we started talking about those other things we thought wow let's plug something in here too so we don't have a kind of alleviate a current issue that we have and then same for the food court plaza that's food truck concept with permanent seating to be able to use okay. yes correct that'd be nice um on the pool um being a former swim team family um the, uh, quite often in the summer, the, the kids will swim uh, competitions, weekend competitions. Will this have the ability to do that? Um, I know 
like we used to go to Dearborn, an outdoor pool there, and I just don't know what considerations you need in order to be ready for those types of events. So when we get closer to that, we probably need to focus on that. You know, what amenities, what facilities that they need, because there's usually like a Friday, Saturday, Sunday event, um, and it could be a money maker for us. They're quite popular. Right. I'm sure you guys yeah. have thought that. Yeah, that's something that they brought to us specifically to, to make it an eight lane, 50 meter pool so yeah. that it would be um, usable for competitions like that and practices like that as well. Because yeah. if you have morning swim practices, um, it's that balance between community use and rental space use that we wouldn't want it to become overly dominated so the community doesn't isn't able to get in there. But if we are able to offset some expenses with uh, that swim team and practice competitions, et cetera, um, that would certainly be beneficial to us. So when it comes to the, the nitty gritty design, architectural designs, those are certainly things that we can incorporate into that. Yeah, I'm sure the Cruiser Swim Club would rent space for in the summers for practices as well. I don't know have what people they do knocking down days. our doors to get that space. Yeah. 6 a.m. Stephen, 6 a.m. I, I have, <laughs> I have been there at 6 a.m. for my dropping off my kids for. Yeah, same uh, at the, here. Um, and then the last question I had was the one part I don't really see much about is the Northwest, the football and lacrosse. And are those utilized heavy today? Is that the Canton Lions up there? And are there enhancements we should be looking at for them, stands or some something that they could use? Really, the, the biggest enhancement, I mean, the stands, those are some things that we could do. Those are not a facility piece. Those are just pieces of equipment that aren't right. uh, crazy expensive that we would need to include in this. Um, the biggest improvement for them is that we're making improvements elsewhere to improve the soccer fields on the front side so that soccer isn't utilizing those fields so that their fields would then stay in better shape. So it's okay. less use of their fields makes their, those fields better, just inherently. The other opportunity that this plan provides is additional parking adjacent to those uh, with a pathway crossing down towards, just on the bottom side of the cricket field is a maintenance building with public restrooms, which would offer a restroom much closer to those fields than the one currently at the playground. Oh, okay, great. Just a real quick comment. I agree with my colleagues. This is very exciting. Um, and I love the idea of the natural shade, because as we know, we need more shade there. And then the hydration stations. It's really, those are really great ideas. So thank you very much. Thank you, Michael. You want something else? Oh, just real quick. Um, the playground over by the proposed basketball courts to the, to the north, did we talk about putting a swing set over there by the uh, play structure? Because that would be... We didn't get into a specific okay. playground design that would be, again, in that architectural piece uh, as the next step. Register my request that we talk, put a swing <laughs> over there. <laughs> Michael likes to go swing Playgrounds at lunchtime. And swing. <laughs> Playgrounds Adult and swing, swing set. Peanut butter and jelly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. All right, thank you. One of the other things I wanted to mention, I think that's an opportunity for Heritage, is that a lot of these components um, to enhance the park are not dependent on one another. So you would be able to come in and um, phase this nicely. Um, and I think do some projects um, even next year that would really you know, show the township's investment um, and kind of check off some of that low hanging fruit. Um, so one of those uh, opportunities might be the food truck plaza. Um, you know, if this were developed um, for next year, that might be a nice um, amenity to augment um, the concerts and other events and with COVID, um, kind of the repercussions um, might be a, you know, a very popular and um, obvious attraction uh, for the community. All right, so getting into Ridge Road, the blank slate. Um, when we started um, uh, this project, we understood that the uh, community already had a preference for um, 
maintaining this uh, very unique area as a natural space um, and for it to be uh, largely passive, uh, which is a different direction than the 2015 plan, um, which had multiple athletic fields. So with that in the back of our mind and the discussions that we had with um, residents um, of Canton Township, uh, this was the use diagram um, that we were able to construct. And uh, some of the top comments that we heard were for winter activities, um, and that included uh, sledding. Uh, to have nature trails, a combination of uh, both paved and natural uh, wood chip, um, and the ability for potentially cross-country meets, um, so a 5K loop. Um, there was a lot of discussion about a nature center and really making this um, a park an opportunity for education, um, maybe used by the school district, um, and tying into a bit of the Native American heritage um, and culture. Uh, accessible playgrounds um, were also uh, discussed and desired um, from those that we heard from, um, as well as environmental enhancements, just recognizing that this is really a very unique um, and special area um, that has a, a totally different feel than any of the other uh, recreation spaces in the township. Um, we also heard that um, this space uh, could be more welcoming, um, so not just uh, a place where one might drive to, um, but to really improve the access to the park um, so that pedestrians and bikers um, would be able to enjoy it um, and that all the surrounding neighborhoods um, could really use it as a, a destination without getting into their car. Um, so with uh, those um, feedback items, uh, we were able to further refine this concept uh, into this design, and I'm gonna let Julie go through some of the key items. So I'd like to start with the face of the park at Ridge Road and Ford Road. We would really like to celebrate this entrance to the park, connect it to the charter school to the east, uh, connect it to the neighborhoods, um, present the opportunity to connect it south to Preservation Park for a pedestrian corridor. Um, we wanna open it up, offer signage, wayfinding, and open that corner to a butterfly garden with native plants and wildflowers, accessible paths, benches, interpretive signage, and picnic opportunities. Uh, the main objective with this park was to keep it environmentally and economically responsible and utilize soft engineering techniques. Um, we don't want to be piping a lot of water underground, and we don't want to be wasting any resources. Uh, so uh, this plan proposes creating a pond and using that cut soil to create the sledding hills to reduce the amount of materials brought in and out of the park and celebrate what the park already has as a natural character. Um, we would maintain the location of the driveway, yet extend that uh, beyond the pond to give it more of a destination feel uh, going over a small bridge and around to a very centralized parking lot so that every aspect of the park is easily accessible. Uh, let's see. We've got on the north side uh, the sledding hills created from cut from the pond. We have a steeper more uh, thrilling sledding hill uh, on your left and to the right uh, bunny hill with the opportunity to be 
accessible with either magic carpet or a rope tow so that it's a very inclusive space throughout the seasons. In the summer times, these can have exercise classes, running up and down the hills, um, providing small music opportunities with amphitheater hill type seating. Uh, an additional drop off a uh, loop parking lot for the for this area and a warming wigwam. Um, we would really like to provide an homage to the indigenous people with this park. We don't want to make it themed, but we would like to be respectful and celebrate heritage of the indigenous people. Uh, and one way could be through the architecture that appears on the park and through the story trail on the east or on the west side of the park in the nature ramble. Um, this is a free form playground. So it is a, an accessible surface without defined limitations there it would be more of a free form story trail and adjacent to that b is a naturalized playground for all age groups surrounding that is an outdoor fitness trail and just to the east is an open lawn and picnic grove this is we're trying to preserve a passive, flexible type of programming throughout the park um, and create as much shade opportunities as possible to give it a very different character than what uh, the nearby par parks provide. Um, we would like to preserve as much of the existing trees and provide accessible pathways, most likely uh, requiring boardwalks through that area to connect back to the butterfly gardens. And within all these looping trails, there's actually a 5K loop, um, which would be fully accessible and include wayfinding signage. Um, other trails throughout the park would be a more natural surface, um, and preserve as much of the natural character as possible so that this park coexists with nature instead of forcing anything upon it. One last thing to mention, um, a couple other potential small parking areas just to help disperse um, any um, um, visitors to the park, and perhaps if if this pavilion, for instance, was going to be um, rented out or used um, for a small gathering, um, it's a closer in proximity. These um, auxiliary parking lots um, are uh, very small in nature and could be um, of a alternative paving material uh, easily. Are there questions on this? Yeah, it's beautiful. Anyone? I just, one last comment on it too. Um, they, um, it just everything can easily get forgotten. They did a nice job of pulling things in kind of central, anything that is more active away from the residents and creating buffer zones there so that those individuals that do border the park will still have a natural buffer from any um, activities there. So trying to be respectful of them was, was another big piece we tried to, to keep in mind with this park. Great, thank you. Any comments or questions on this one? I'll just make sure. a Some comment. Trustee Summer. Um, I don't think a lot of residents know a lot about the indigenous history of Canton Township, so hopefully um, having this in the community um, help would help with that. Um, I think this is great. I don't think we have anything like it um, in this community or anything like it in um, many nearby communities, so I think it's great. Thank you.
Anyone else? Sure. Um, love the idea of the sledding hills. I know neighboring communities have them, and we really don't. Um, and um, it will be uh, just like Heritage Park will be like a summer centerpiece. I think this will become a winter centerpiece of our community, and I, I really like that. Um, and I, I like the concept of, I know you mentioned them as auxiliary parking lots, but trailhead parking lots, and it makes it seem like these are trails that you can utilize. It's, you know, there's a whole community of hikers and bikers in our community that, and, and as you've said, um, cross-country skiers that will um, see that and say, you know, this is a park for us. So I really like that as well. Um, one question I have is, um, you mentioned the story trail that, and I know we did something in Heritage Park with that. Is that something that r rotates? So the story is always different. So it attracts people back time and time again. Yes. Yeah. We work with the library to continually rotate that, uh, story trail out at, uh, in Heritage Park. So that continually changes once a month. Monthly. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Laura. Great. Thank you. I love it. Hey, Kate. Um, so again, I, I really like this design. Um, when we're looking at the park entry that is sort of a showcase, that is only pedestrian, right? Okay, I thought so. I mean, it looks like it. Um, and so then the, the entrances for vehicles would be off of Ridge Road and then off of Hanford and then off Ford, right? Okay. Um, I was just before um, Stephen mentioned it, I wanted to um, also mention the uh, um, hoping that we'll have opportunities for cross-country skiing here also. Um, that, you know, that wasn't mentioned in the description, but um, seeing as we have trails that won't necessarily be paved, I would hope that they could do that. Anyone else? No, thank you, Mike, Michael. Um, 232 spaces is a lot. Is there a specific reason why we want to put that much um, parking on this? I mean, it's a big, it's a big space. It's what is this like? A hundred and some odd acres, hundred and like twenty acres or something like that. Yeah. So we're for the multiple potential uses out here was one key with that um, for you'd have folks there potentially for the classroom on the south side um, using the um, hills on the north side if we do have cross-country meets or um, 5ks that would be we we receive numerous requests throughout the year to utilize Heritage Park and the local roadways in the area for fundraising 5Ks like we do with Liberty Fest. And there is no place in Canton right now that you could do that without road closures. And this would allow for a 5K fundraiser, um, cross country meet, whatever the case may be, without closing any roads. And then you would have the, the parking that you would need for that as well. An additional justification for the size of the parking lot is when there wouldn't be necessarily an event um, like a 5K, uh, the radiuses within the parking lots and the lengths would provide stacking lanes for buses if that um, outdoor classroom were to be utilized, particularly as a nature center. Right. I think you had also talked about alternative Surfaces for parking also you were looking at we could put as a line item. Um, trailhead parking, right? For the trailhead parking? Yes, or even the, the main one. I mean, you could look at, I know they have alternatives to, so that we reduce runoff and heat. and Permeable. All, permeable, yeah. right. Well, the beauty of the parking lot being directly in the middle part of the parcel is even if there's a substantial amount of runoff, it's just going to run off into the park. You know, mm -hmm. but yeah, no, that's a good point. Um, I like this design a lot, and I thought it was really cool and creative. Um, I would just, if we're going, like for item D and item C, right, the 
like a native, bringing in like a native structure or doing celebrating native heritage. Um, I would just recommend if we, if we stick with that as kind of the direction we want to go in that we maybe reach out to some of the federally recognized tribes in Michigan and maybe create an advisory committee where they could help us navigate how that um, might not be considered appropriation and could be considered celebration um, and honoring, you know, because I imagine that's a potentially delicate. I've seen it done in some California parks where they get buy-in and they've done it, so that would be super cool. It's just an area where I would exercise some caution and make sure I created a big table on that one um, of the key people who could help. Um, but other than that, I think it's absolutely... Um, yeah, I was blown away when I saw this proposal. Um, so good, good job. And I like the idea of like um, having a place for, for, for winter programming and like that just, I get so lethargic in the winter time, you know, I don't, I don't like to do much in the winter time. And, and this would, you know, give an opportunity to do things like snowshoe or cross country ski, uh, sledding uh, um, in an actual designated spa space um, where I'm not close to the road. I like to sled at the Lots um, Hill uh, over by the golf course, but you're right off the road there. And so that's uh, a super, super cool. Um, my other question is the, 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 the forest at the bottom um, it says uh, putting in accessible boardwalk routes potentially, and then it says a serene screened pavilion. Now, I believe, and I don't know officially, but I believe that that section is under a, a nature a nature conservant eas easement. Um, how much, if that is that true, and then if it is true, how much development are we allowed to legally do in that area? Can we put structures in there or? I don't believe it's a nature conservancy as much as it is protected wetlands. And that's why we would need to do like boardwalks across the wetlands, that, okay. that sort of thing. So then there's, there's no easement placed over that? I, I do not believe, believe so. so. Okay, um, perfect. It is wetland classified soils, but not a uh, recognized wetland. That's fantastic. I was just, I've been given the information that was not factually correct. Michael, and one of the discussions that a lot of people have mentioned with the interest of being able to walk through those woods is the number of bugs and other um, environmental factors. And that if there was a screened in space that they'd be able to spend more time in that oh, yeah. area. So if we, the longer we can get people to stay out in nature, the better and, um, if that's all we need to do is create a screen in space for them to stay a little bit longer, then it would probably have a lot more benefit. Oh, that makes, that makes uh, good sense. Yeah, I was gonna mention that um, the pond, you, have, you have down that the um, ponds will have jets for aeration, which is great. Um, but I was thinking about the mosquitoes because I was just at the park like about a week and a half ago and got a little swarmed. So, yeah. Now we just have to figure out how to keep the geese off the paths. <laughs> <laughs> Another, um, in um, Washtenaw County has a really cool park called County Farm Park. And one of the interesting things is near their um, butterfly gardens, they have uh, beekeeping. Yeah. This where is. citizens and residents can keep bees. And it's interesting because it's right next to the path and you would intuitively think, well, why, my God, why would you want all these bees near these kids? They're gonna get stung, um, which is interesting because honey, honeybees actually don't typically sting. And they had really cool educational signs about the values of bees. Um, and I know we have an active group of people who uh, really like keeping bees in Canton, but are agricultural ordinance has been a thorn in their side. Um, it might be a cool thing to do. Um, on the other hand, honeybees, I don't believe are like wild bees. So I don't know if that would harm the wild bees wanting to 
pollinate those gardens or not, but it was just a, it was a cool thing I saw in Ann Arbor that I, I, I thought was cool and I liked it. And at first I was like, oh no, we're coming up on some beehives. And then I realized uh, these bees don't bother us. And there were like hundreds of bees around and they didn't, didn't bother anybody. So just an idea. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Uh, yeah, I just, uh, you know, when I saw it first time, I really loved it. And maybe we can have some, some sort of a beekeeping thing near the nature center. Maybe people, you know, if there's some sort of class and beekeepers want to show something, uh, we can do something around those lines because it's, or I, I don't know, I'm just, giving an idea of where we can, if we want to have, or we can have it near the butterfly gardens. But my main comment was that, you know, we, um, north side of Ford Road always, I, this is going to be a good park. Now we have a great winter park or then I, in, on the north side of Ford Road, like com which is comparative to Heritage Park and really looking forward to this. Thank you. Thank you for all your comments this evening. Um, so just to wrap up, some of the key uh, next steps in the process. Um, October, the month of October, um, is designated as the uh, required public comment period um, and public review period. So the draft plan will be available um, on the township's website, um, of course, at uh, Township Hall offices, the library, um, it will be shared in the Focus newsletter, um, social media, um, and this is an opportunity for uh, the citizens to review the plan and to send in any comments. All of those comments are collected and uh, um, combined and presented then um, to Leisure Services and uh, this body. And then uh, November 9th is the um, potential uh, adoption consideration for the plan. And we actually have until um, February 1st to submit the plan to MDNR. Um, don't wanna wait that long, um, but that is the deadline um, to submit that adopted plan. And then immediately following um, that February 1st uh, deadline, uh, April 1st is the deadline for um, the grant cycle. So. We do see um, the Ridge Road Park as being really a key um, or a, a prime candidate um, for state funding with the national or na the natural trust fund um, or the the wildlife um, uh, and water grant. So, um, if the township is interested in moving forward with that, um, that April first deadline is just something to kind of. Uh, consider um, and to, to start planning for in the next couple months. If there are any other comments, we would love to hear them. Um, we appreciate the feedback that we received tonight. Thank you. Um, so if there is any other feedback when you're thinking about this later on in the week, uh, please do um, share that feedback with Leisure Services and, and we'll be sure to, um, to receive it. You know what those grant amounts are in terms of what we can apply for the total or the max, maximum amount you can apply for each park? Um, I think for the, the land and water conservation, it's 300,000 match. Um, and then the trust fund, um, I think is similar, I think 300,000, but you can apply for both. Um, and then there's a couple like the passport uh, recreation grant um, that's much smaller. Okay, thank you. Kate, Trustee Kate. Um, Laura, could you send us your presentation from tonight? Yeah, of course. Anyone else? No, this is great. And actually, there's a lot of programs out there, crowdfunding. We could do a lot of fundraising around this also, which helps. Do we have an estimate as to the cost anywhere? For the Ridge Road project? Yes. Um, if you're looking at um, just like back of the napkin, um, looking at the, the primary trails, the 5K loop, um, the, the parking lot, the entrance um, work for the grading, um, that would be about 10 million. About 10 million. What about the Heritage Park? That one, um, 
There's so many different components. Uh, we haven't really um, priced out any uh, cost estimates for those yet. The, the pool itself um, would definitely be the, the biggest cost uh, factor in, in um, investment. Okay, any other comments or questions? I would just, yeah. you know, once we finally have an idea of like cost estimates, we could talk about like how to phase some of these projects in, um, and that might give us a, we might wanna develop a good strategy to like, you know, how do you phase these in to make it so that the Ridge Road Park is at least somewhat usable? Also, you know, but, but yeah, I, I would say, you know, my fear would be that we just don't do anything because of the enormity of the costs of some of the stuff. Um, but, but yeah, just. Great, that's a good idea. Do you have a, I mean, maybe you could help with a phased in approach or do you have recommendations for a phased in approach? Yeah, we can look at that when it comes kind of next to next step. The, the first step is obviously getting all of the designs, making sure we're comfortable with that. And then when it comes to the actual implementation, we can look at um, a, a phase in approach if or all in one approach or however we, we feel it's best based on kind of the, the cost and the other priorities. I know the, the board has a lot of aggressive goals, so we got to prioritize all those different things. Does this um, does the DNR grants, do they require you to define those phased in approaches when you're doing the, the, the applications then? Okay. Okay. Yes. So when it comes to grants, there are limitations with each one on what you're eligible to apply for. So you, for one part, can apply for different grants all in the same space. So you might apply for the um, cricket field for a recreation passport grant, and you might apply for a natural resource trust fund grant for other aspects throughout the park. So you can apply for more than one grant for an individual park. They obviously encourage you to prioritize what your projects are if there isn't enough funding to go around for all of them, but you are allowed to submit multiple projects, um, especially if you're looking at different parks and different types of services or amenities that you're looking to. But as we found is you have to be very strategic on what it is you're asking for. You have to list the exact amenities and the exact um, engineering costs and everything that goes with it. And that would most certainly be one of our next steps once we adopt the master plan is to go for the actual engineered designs for things like that so we can get it much more specific with the amount of cost that it would be for each of those phases. Yes, go ahead. Now, we also annually receive funds from the Wayne County Parks Millage too. From a strategy standpoint, would we use those at the other parks or would we wanna tackle some of these projects with potentially with that money too? Or does it, or what's the, what's, 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 what are your thoughts? So I guess that is something that the board can decide on historically. What we try and do is kind of come up with a five-year plan for what we're gonna try to use the Wayne County funds for. Um, but we could certainly use those and they could be used to either um, supplement in addition to grant funding and township funding or be utilized as the match funding for the township as well. As each of those DNR grants do, do have requirements for match. You're saying we have to decide if it's ancillary funds or if that's the funds we use for a match. That's correct. clear when we, we made our board goal of healthy environment that we definitely prioritized outdoor recreation. Um, so I, I think I would be discouraged if we chose to use that as our matching and we didn't budget general fund dollars for recreation or park development, but that's just me personally. Are there any hands online? Public comment? About the plan at all? Anybody want to ask any questions? Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much. They're great plans. Thank you. Thank you. Now we move on to public comment. Is there any public comment online first? We'll start there. 
Nothing. Nothing. Okay. Public comment. We'll give three minutes. George, did you have public comment? Yes, or reg other public comment. If you can come up. Yeah. Yes. You can come up to the podium, please. Let's touch on this green situation. Kept up with these dumps out here. There's 200 acres over there on Van Bourne Road. Talk to the state. I want you to understand. People issue the permits. You see that dump over there? Never, ever is there trees going to grow on it. Because it's too warm and it will never take it. So you need to be concerned about that, for one thing. What is, what's going to be? Yeah, it'll grow grass. It ain't, you need to go through the state and see if there's any tree to mount to anything or brush growing in the last 50 years. Okay. Other issue, two or three, four weeks ago, I noticed in some of the minutes, there is an okay, and correct me if I'm wrong, on buying a piece of machinery, an excavator, for around $140,000. Is that correct? Possibly. I believe you had submitted that question to Sharonda, and she's sending you an email if you want to talk to her. Well, let's address the issue now. Years, not too long ago, 10 or 15 years ago, maybe that seems a long time here. Evidently, you bought a cat excavating shovel for around 75000 used. All the sewer taps in this township going to houses are not over 10 or 15 feet, which the, which a backhoe will take care of. So you have the shovel now. I'd like to know why that one's not good enough. It shouldn't be wore out because in Detroit, I've been in the sewer system here looking at it when I bought property. And this Detroit sewer system, the 25-foot sewers, they're supposed to service them in the water main, some of that stuff. Not us. So your back holes over here reach 15 foot deep, and I worked around heavy equipment, should handle it with no problem. Now let's go to the fork truck. I don't know why you need a fork truck for 30 grand, a Caterpillar, that's first class. Maybe you need to go to Deer or Case, which is a good piece of machinery. I don't know if that's been considered. The next thing is, I'd like to know $10 million, you're talking about parks here possibly. I don't know what the grants are, I'd like to know if that's going to be added on to the taxes, probably, possibly. I'm underneath and stand, understanding, correct me if I'm wrong. When the roads went through here, we had a committee that suggested it. The trustees here have a right to put it on the ballot. Then you vote on it. Well, guess what? Taxes can go up for 20 years. I'd like to know why that wasn't contracted for five years at a time instead of 20-year program. So I like to, and another thing is this 30,000 for a fork truck and excavator here, excavating shovel, I, and I've approached it, you have a van here that has a lift to help children in it after school and so forth, so be it. And I've asked for maybe a, a adults, crippled adults to go over to U of M's. A lot of people have doctors over there in St. Joe's, why that can't be used part of the time. Maybe if we weren't spending 140 grand for a shovel, possibly we don't need, we'd have money for that. Thank you, George. Okay, any other questions or comments from the staff? No, trustees? So Greg, you wanna talk a little bit, you or John, about what's well, happening on Friday? Sure, yeah, we uh, picnic in the park will be taking place this Friday evening. We're excited. These are the fireworks carrying over from past Liberty Fest, so we're, we're well overdue for this as a community. So Friday night from 5 to 9 in Heritage Park, we'll have uh, live entertainment on two stages, the amphitheater and the Canton Live stage. Uh, we'll also have uh, 16 or 17 food trucks on site, so we're excited about that, and they'll be kind of spread uh, throughout the park on each side by, by each stage. And then, of course, the fireworks at 8 p.m. So we're very excited. We're hoping the community will come out and enjoy it. It should be a beautiful fall. The forecast looks great for Friday, so hopefully we can get through the next two days of cold and rain and be ready to go on, Saturday, on Friday. So we, we look forward to that and hope to see everybody out there. Great. That'll be exciting. Thank you. Okay. Can I have a motion to adjourn, please? So moved. 
Motion made by Clerk Segrist and supported by Treasurer Slavens. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? I never hear no one ever opposes. All right, thanks everyone. Have a good night. <laughs>